Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to share a really neat container planting concept. It's really fun for me because it's something that my mom did for us when we were growing up and she taught it at the container planting seminars they had down at the garden center throughout the years. Um, so we are planting a spaghetti pot. Basically the main ingredients that you would need to harvest and take into your kitchen to cook up a really wonderful spaghetti sauce. So I have five different plants I'm putting in this container. I've got garlic right here, a tomato, basil, oregano, and rosemary. I think the major players here are the tomato and the basil and then you could kind of adjust the other plants in the container based on what your taste is. All of us have a different taste on spaghetti sauce so like if you like a lot of onions but not much garlic or no garlic at all swap onions in instead of garlic. If you don't like rosemary swap something different in. It can all be adjusted a little bit. You do want to make sure that you're planting all things that like a lot of sun because that's what your tomato and basil will like and they are, are compatible for water which all of these will do really well. I have already run a drip tube up into this container so that I can make sure to hook it into our system when we're all done here. Um, so what I want to do first though is I'm going to take all of these plants out and I want to prep my soil. I've already filled the container halfway with the Espoma potting mix and now I need to add in my fertilizer. There's a couple different routes you can go. You can add in a slow release fertilizer like I'm going to do today. This is the one I'm using. It's called Tomato Tone. It's good for tomatoes and all vegetables. So I think all of these will do really well with this. Um, or you can go the liquid route, but you do have to fertilize a little bit more often, usually like every week to 10 days to keep your plants happy. The main goal though, the main point is to make sure that you're fertilizing your plants, especially if they're in a container um, because they're kind of at your mercy. The only nutrients they get are what you give them. Um, so I've got about maybe a little over a cubic foot of soil already in the container. You add two cups of this per cubic foot of soil. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to mix that in really well before I top it off. And then I'll add two more cups of this and mix it in so that it's really incorporated all the way throughout all of the soil. A little stinky. This one's like pungent. Must be extra good. my other two cups mixed in so my fertilizer is all the way throughout the soil and all I'll have to do for the remainder of the season is come in maybe two more times with the tomato tone and sprinkle a little bit around the edge water it in and then they'll have a constant supply of nutrients slowly feeding their roots. Um, I do have one plant here the garlic is a really heavy feeder um, so you do need to do it a little bit more often. I might come in maybe one extra time or maybe two um, just to give it a little bit more food just around that plant in particular. So the first plant I want to put in the container is my tomato because that's going to be my biggest plant in this whole container. Uh, I've got one that I tried last year for the first time called Garden Treasure. I really liked the flavor and that's the main thing. You want to make sure you're putting a tomato in your plant that has good, good flavor because it's going to really shape the way your sauce tastes. Um, also, when you're choosing a tomato for a container, you probably would want to go with one that's labeled for patio or for containers or that's a determinant. So you'll see the word determinant on the tag. That means they stay a little bit shorter, a little bit more compact. This is not a determinant tomato, so I'm going to be providing an excellent support structure and I'm planning to prune a lot. So you can put aroma in here if you want to, even though they do get kind of bigger, um, which, you know, aromas are a really good sauce tomato traditionally, but I just thought this one would be a fun one to try out. So that I actually kind of backed up a little bit in the pot because this container is just going to be scooted just like a foot back um, and it'll have its back right up against this fence which it might look a little odd, I'm not sure, but I'm going to use this really pretty Nocturne Pot Obelisk from Gardener Supply. I've showed it to you before. This will be my tomato support structure. It's a really strong, stout obelisk. I think that's the most important thing. So I'm gonna try to get the steaks fed onto the bottom here, and then we'll just place it right over the tomato. I don't know if this is gonna work. Put them in and try not to have them fall out. Maybe if I went like that. Kind of nest that in pretty deep so it's nice and strong. Of course, as these plants start to root in, everything will get pretty well put into place here. Yeah, having this obelisk off center a little bit, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I usually have my obelisks right in the middle of my pots, but I think it's going to work really well for the tomato whilst still being decorative and looking pretty. So now we're going to go in with our other four plants. I'm going to start with the garlic first. I'm going to put it on this side. Now, this is kind of an odd time of year for me to be planting garlic. 
Typically we plant in the fall and let it come up in our gardens and then we harvest right around 4th of July. Um, but these were started clearly a lot earlier than now. Um, so they've already put on a lot of growth. If you feel down in there, I can feel the heads of garlic already forming. Um, so I'll plant it in here today and then we'll probably be able to harvest in a couple of months. So let's see, there's four stalks here. They're really, really root bound. I don't really wanna do much damage to their root system. So I'm gonna leave them just because you know, I'm not expecting these to be huge heads of garlic. They just need to be enough to flavor some, a few batches of spaghetti sauce. So I'm just gonna leave them like that. I think it's a really pretty structure right here anyway, having that grassy texture. The next plant I wanna put in is rosemary. And I don't use a whole lot of this in any kind of sauce, um, but a little bit is really nice. And I chose a trailing variety, trailing rosemary so that it would uh, trail over the side of the container. It will put on a little bit of upward growth, like it'll probably fill into about here or so, but we'll also have a nice trail. And even though the aesthetics is not really what this planter is about, it kind of is for me still. I want it to still look like a really interesting container and have different textures and growth habits. Like one could use purple basil if you wanted to. I don't tend to love the flavor of purple basil, but if you do, that would be a beautiful accent in this container. It would be a little variation from all the green we're using. Next plant is Italian oregano, which will grow about a foot or so, maybe a little bit taller. And it'll just be a nice little bushy plant right up here. It's got really pretty foliage and love the smell. And the beauty of this pot too, is once you have these herbs in and the tomatoes, you don't have to use them for sauce. You, this is like a little mini garden. You know, you can harvest off of them for whatever you're, you want, for whatever you wanna use them for. And the last plant is a basil basil. So I chose this one, I grow the, grew this basil for the first time last year and it was an amazing performer. It got so big. I'm like, I expect it to like, if it's planted in here, it'll probably, well, it might even get up to here and it'll create like this huge bush on this side of the pot. Um, of course, that was in my raised bed. I don't know how it's gonna act in a container, but the thing I liked about this one is that even when it starts to set flowers, it doesn't change the flavor of the basil like it does on other varieties that you might be familiar with. Um, I mean, it's a good idea to keep those uh, blooms pinched off just for, for productivity reasons. They will be more productive if you do that so that your plant's not sending energy into those blooms and trying to set seed. Um, rather, they're sending energy into more foliage growth, um, but it doesn't affect the flavor, which I appreciate so much. So I don't feel like I have to be such a slave to you know maintaining my basil plants all summer long. Um, so anyway, I was really, I guess, pleasantly surprised by this variety. I just really enjoyed it last year. I'm getting ready to plant more of this in other places in my garden. So that's pretty much it for this project, you guys. And I would love to show you making spaghetti sauce later on in the season from this very container, from these plants. Um, and we will be giving you updates as the season goes, showing you guys how the plants look. Um, you'll be seeing it in tours and all kinds of things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you attempt to do this project, I'd love to know how it goes for you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.